Hello, I'm Rob in collaboration with Mile High United Way. In this series, I will show you how to use a computer from the most basic skills to those necessary to start incorporating computer use in your daily life. These videos will also empower you to help your children with their online homework. Sometimes life demands that we transform ourselves and learn a new skill. Technology and computer use can be overwhelming or scary, but these videos are designed for those with little or no experience with computers. Welcome to using a computer with ease. We won't be demonstrating all uses of a computer, only the basics so you can understand the layout of a computer and feel more comfortable using it. If you are getting to know a computer for the first time, you should understand how a computer is laid out and organized to better understand how to operate it. Because all information is displayed on the screen digitally, it can be difficult to understand the layout on the screen, particularly because it doesn't exist in the three-dimensional world, and it can feel a bit abstract. Fortunately, computers can be understood easily with a few analogies. First, think of a work desk. Here you can put notebooks, pens, folders, and documents. It's the same with a computer. The main space of a computer is called the desktop. Think of the desktop as the base for everything. On top of the desktop, all of your documents, photos, folders, and pages that you want to use on your computer pile up, just like a work desk. On the lower edge of the desktop, you'll find the taskbar. The taskbar is made up of the start button, a search bar for programs on your computer, various icons of these programs, and the system tray. From the start button, you can open any program that's been downloaded onto your computer. You can also access your computer settings here. In this guide, we will not go through all of the settings. This is just a summary of the basic components of a computer. Finally, this is where the power button is found to turn off your computer or restart it. A computer is capable of having multiple accounts with personal desktops for multiple users. If your computer has multiple users, you can log out or sign off here. Sign off of a Chromebook by clicking on the time on the system tray. In case you don't know where a program is located, or where you saved a document and you can't find it from the Start button, there is a search bar on the taskbar. Just enter a title or a search term and the computer will show some options. When working on the computer, it's easy to become overwhelmed with the amount of documents and folders in your workspace. For that, you can hide these things. The taskbar is a tool you can use to help juggle these programs without losing them. Icons that are underlined are the ones you have in use, with the topmost page highlighted. The ones not highlighted are programs that you use most often, so you can find them and open them quickly. If you have a hidden document or program, 
this is where you will find it again. The system tray displays information about the computer itself and not a program. Here you can control the volume or internet connection, see the time and date, the calendar with a click on the time, battery status, and printer status if you are connected to one. When you are working with a document or a program, it is displayed through a window. Perhaps you have heard of Windows, the operating program of PC computers. That name comes from the visual analogy given to the border around documents and programs. Each one has its own window, so you can remain organized, and much like a work desk, they pile up on top of each other. In the upper right corner of each window, you'll find three buttons to control it. Each one manipulates the window in a different way. The X closes the program or document. This is different from hiding it, and you will have to open it again from the Start button or an icon. The square is to maximize the window so that it takes up the whole screen. In order to restore it to the size it had before, the button becomes the opposite, restore down, if your window is already maximized. The line is the button to minimize or hide a window. If your window is minimized, it won't display at all. The only way to know the program or document is open is by the underlined icon in the taskbar. Clicking on the icon again restores the document or program. Another way to minimize the document or program is by clicking on the icon while you can see the document. This helps you exchange one document for another very quickly. Each window has its own title, displayed here in the title bar. Other than showing the title of the document or program, the title bar can be used to move the window freely. Just click and hold on any part of the title bar to drag it around. This is called click and drag. You will remember from the mouse video that you can scroll with the wheel on the mouse. If a window extends lower, a scroll bar will show up on the right, which shows your approximate position on the page. Another way to scroll is to click on the arrows above and below the scroll bar. Or you can click and drag the slider. Let's review. The desktop forms the base on which your work will sit. At the bottom, you'll find a taskbar, which contains the start button from which you can find all your programs downloaded on the computer. A search bar to help you find any program or document. Icons of these programs to help you with quick organization. And the system tray, which displays information about the computer itself. When it comes to the windows, remember that this is a visual analogy for how you view pages and documents. Each one has three buttons which manipulate the windows in different ways. The X closes the window. The square will maximize the window. 
and the line minimizes or hides the window. The title bar at the top of each window shows which page you are viewing, and a click and drag on the title bar will move it freely.